Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let's start our class. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa bihi nasta'in ala kulli umuri dunya wa deen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursalin. Sayyidina wa habibina wa shafi'ina wa nuri qulubina. Wa qurati a'inina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa bari wa salim. Wa tata'anima wa ta'anim wa tata'kura wa tazkir wa naf'a wa lindifa'a. والإفادة والاستفادة والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم ودعاء إلى الخدى ودلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى مع لطف وعافية برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إن نزك العلم لدني والمشرب سوف الهني وهب غني اللهم نزك العلم لدني والمشرب سوف الهني وهب غني اللهم نزك العلم لدني والمشرب سوف الهني وهب غني وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين آمين الحمد لله Okay, the first thing that we will do today is uh, take questions. Anyone has any questions uh, at all? No questions at all about Ramadan, about the next 20 days that I just mentioned uh, just now. Okay, there are no questions. I'm going to type it out here, okay? Uh, Bismillah. Okay. Before I go into today's, today's topic, today we will read from, from Sister Fadila's book. If you watch it, sit in here, and you will take a bit more about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because in our uh, learning the basics of our religion, right, we are right now at the part of learning about his about his blessed life sallallahu alaihi wasallam. All right. Uh, can somebody who wants okay, can someone volunteer to be the co-host so that anybody who wants to come in, you just let them in. Okay, Noor. Okay, so you don't come out. Okay, Noor. <laughs> Because if I make you co-host, you come out. Then after that, now I have no co-host. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make you co-host. Uh, who else can I make co-host? Let's see. Anybody else? Okay. You also want to be co-host? Where? Who, who raised your hand just now? See that I missed out. Okay, okay, okay. Who's that? Who's that? All right. I'm making you co-host. Okay. So basically, your only your job is just to let people in. All right? Because sometimes when I'm teaching, I can't see if anybody has entered. All right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, so today we are on, we are already halfway Ramadan, right? Ramadan began on a Thursday night. We are already halfway Ramadan. I, I want to mention some things about this Saturday. Saturday night, 17th of Ramadan. Right, so it's 17th of Ramadan. Let me just type it out here. My co host, can you let people in? <laughs> it's blocking my screen. <laughs> just admit them. Okay? Okay, so here. I'm just type it out here. Okay, so now we are in the so the first twenty days, sorry, ten days, first ten days of Ramadan. Right, we ask Allah for His mercy. Right, this is from our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, where he said that for the first ten days of Ramadan, right, it's a days of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa taala, and we say Allahu marhamni ya arhamar rahimin. Right, so we ask for mercy. This has finished. The first 10 days of Ramadan has gone past us. Right, that ended on, if I'm not wrong, on, Saturday, on Sunday. Right, then now we are in our second 10 days. Right, we're in our second 10 days of Ramadan, uh, which is about forgiveness. Right, forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in the second, days of Ram- second, in second 10 days of Ramadan, what we say is that we say, Allahumma ghafir zunubi ya rabbal alamin. I'm going to be out, uh, but in translation, Allahumma, Allahumma, gha- Allahumma ghafir zunubi ya rabbal alamin. Lami, okay. Allahumma ghafir dhunubi ya Rabbal alamin, right? Uh, which means, Oh Allah, forgive for me, forgive my sins. Oh Lord of the worlds, okay. So to do it, to do it in, a, in abundance, in the second, in the second third of Ramadan, right? Ramadan is broken up into three parts. And the wisdom of doing that right, is that 
<coughs> the wisdom of the Prophet ﷺ in doing that, right, is that is that you know that the first ten days you focus on something, then the next ten you focus on something, and the last ten you focus on something, so you don't get tired out. Like in Ramadan, right? so you, like every ten days you think of something else and you focus on that. So you ask for forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right? And the last ten, uh, you you focus on uh, uh, making du'a to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to to prevent you from entering the hellfire and from and to enter into paradise. Right. So it, so Allah forgive my sins, Lord of the worlds. Right. And of course we have our Dikir Ramadan, which we have not done yet. We're gonna do it now. Right, which is who can tell us what is the dikir of Ramadan? We do it together, okay? Nashadu Allah ilaha illallah, nastaghfirullah, nas'aluka jannata wa na'udhu bika minan nar. Nashadu Allah ilaha illallah, nastaghfirullah, nas'aluka jannata wa na'udhu bika minan nar. نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله نستغفر الله نسألك الجنة ونعوذ بك من النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فعف عنا يا كريم. And so whenever you uh, you have time, you know you're, you're, you're not doing anything, I do this zikr right, in Ramadan and try. And as, as you mentioned before, we came into Ramadan and how we have uh, you know written down what are the things in Ramadan that you want to get rid of, right? And have how are we are how, how are we with all these things, eh? And then we want to get rid of this, get rid of that. We want to stop doing certain things in Ramadan. We want to improve in doing more good things in Ramadan. You want to improve in your in your in your Quran. You want to improve in your prayers. You want to improve in helping your your, your family. You want to improve in your habits, right? In your character, in your uh, friendships with those around you, in your relationships with your fam, if your if your cousins and your family, and all of these things that we wrote at the beginning of Ramadan. Now we are at the center of Ramadan, right? So we can look at what we wrote, right? And then we can uh, see like, how far we have got it, we have gone right, in these things. Okay, I want to talk about the 17th of Ramadan that is coming on. Right, 17th of Ramadan, two very important events happen in on this date. Who knows? Two very important events happen on this date on the 17th of Ramadan. Huh? Yes, Nuzul al Quran, right? So that's the first one, right? The first revelation, right, of the Quran, right? Which you will know, you will hear the word Nuzul, right? Nuzul al Quran. What is the second thing that happened in this great night? Not on the same night, but the same date. Seventeen so Ramadan, which this is not Isra Miraj. Isra Miraj happened in Rajab. One very important event happened on the 17th of Ramadan. Battle of Badr, well done. <laughs> Battle of Badr. Right, I'm going to speak a bit about these two things right today but, and see how we, be, we benefit from these things in our time. Because this is how many years ago, right? And we are how many years later? And the 17th of Ramadan is actually uh, this Saturday night. Correct? Tonight is the 15th night of Ramadan, right? Tonight, right? And then Friday is the 16th night, and then Saturday is the 17th night. This Saturday night right, is the 17th night of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, right, that, that uh, we have our class right before it, so you don't forget when it comes. This Saturday night, the 17th of Ramadan, it is a night whereby du'as are accepted. Right, in mustajab, we call it mustajab. Mustajab. Du'as are mustajab. Okay, so and we will speak about these two things. I want to speak about number one and then speak about number two uh, in a while. Okay, and, and whenever you have any questions, you just put your questions on the chat. You know, let me let me enable the chat first because I, I disable it whenever I teach small children <laughs> because they like to write things on the chat. Right. Okay, so but you all are uh, adults, right? So you won't be uh, writing nonsense on the chat. <laughs> you will you will be only putting questions there. Alright, so here, 
the first thing on the 17th of Ramadan. So okay, first, first before I talk, I talk about the, the stories about on the first on the first revelation of the Quran, and we talk about the stories in the Battle of Badr. And we will speak about first how do we prepare ourselves for this great night that is on the 17th of Ramadan on Saturday night. Right? So I'm going to show you some tips. Right? The first thing right, is to uh, uh, so whether or not you're able to pray. Okay, I know some of you here, you might not be able to pray on the on the 17th of Ramadan night. Right? That, you, that you might not be able to pray Isha or Subuh or Taraweh. You can't do your Quran because of uh, your menstruation. Right? So we will speak about that later on. Right? But on the 17th of Ramadan, right, first and foremost, that you must have your intention. The intention to uh, to do more good deeds right, on this night. Right? So, to do, so first and foremost, you must put in your intention. So before the night comes, you already think, okay, I want to do... So you don't just say a general statement. You say, okay, I want to... Okay, if you have not been praying 20 rakats of Taraweh every night, right, then, okay, that night must pray 20 rakats of Taraweh. Right? If you have not been praying Taraweh at all, the whole of Ramadan, okay, then at least that night, do your Taraweh. Right? If, and you must see what, what you have been doing. If you have been doing 20 rakats of Taraweh, very well done, and very good, all every single night, been doing twenty rakaats of Taraweh with your family, right? Or with yourself, whoever you're doing it with, right? So, maybe on that night you say to yourself, okay, I want to do uh, more Quran. I'll read more Quran on that night. Right? So whatever you want to do, that is more. Right? So to have more good deeds on that night, right? So first thing I'll give you an example, eh? I put A, right? A, uh, uh, pray, Isha. In Jama'ah and congregation, I'm going to start from I'm going to start from the most uh, most important and right? the most important. There are people who will pray Taraweeh together, but they don't pray Isha together, right? and that is actually uh, the opposite. You should aim to pray Isha together, right? because the one who prays Isha together is equals to your reward is equals to half the night of praying, half the night of praying, bring Isha together, and those who pray Subo together is equals to the entire night of praying. Right? So, so this is the first thing that you should prioritize. Right? To pray Isha together, right? if your family, Jama'ah, right? and pray Subo together. And that is the first thing that you should do. Praying Isha and praying Subo. Praying Isha and Subo. Okay? Of course, praying Taraweh together is a very good thing. Right? But, but priorities, okay? What are our priorities? Priority will be that the wajib prayer you do together. Okay, the sunnah prayer that it is good to go to do together, but don't don't like focus on the sunnah to do together, and then the wajib prayer you don't do it together, and then you're gonna, then you're gonna miss out right, on the reward. That is very easy. Four rakaats together, one whole night, you get, and two rakaats even better. <laughs> two rakaats is subuh after you wake up or two sahur. You don't just go and uh, pray by yourself and then go and sleep, and you wait, wait for your family, wait for your for your father, for your brother, for your mother, anybody. You wait. And then you pray two rakaas is equal to, to one whole night, you know. One whole night of praying. As if you pray one whole night. And so of course it's it's, it's a waste, right? If if you wake up you already woken up for sahur and then you don't want to stay awake a bit more. Just to get a bit more a lot not a bit more, a lot more uh, uh, reward and pahala. And Allah wants to give us a, a lot in Ramadan. So bring Isha in Jama'ah, right? Jama'ah congregation. Uh, bring it into the congregation the first thing right so if you have not been doing that right second thing right on this night so you yes, I say do a bit more okay do a bit more right if you can do the sunnah right sunnah prayers after isha and subuh and subuh is before right? and before subuh i'm going to put a lot here for you all to choose okay so it's not that you say oh so so many things to do <laughs> like on the night of on the seventeenth of Ramadan. Right? It's more of like that you see okay I, okay all this while I've already been doing my isha. Okay, you know you know it's good. I've been doing my isha with my family. Okay, good. What else can I do? Okay, I can do this one a bit more. Right? So I'm giving you all suggestions. Right? What can you do a bit more, a bit more, a bit more? Right? So everybody you don't have to tell me where you're at. They will tell me whether you're praying or not. They will tell me whether you're praying your family or not. They will tell me anything. Right, but you yourself are thinking to yourself, okay, I want to do as much as I can, especially on the seventeenth of Ramadan, right? So I want to think to myself, what can I do that is more, right? So that I can, I know, and it's for you. I, I'm nobody's going to check on you and to check whether you you do it or not. Right? It's your own decision what you want to do, all right? 
So sunnah prayers after Isha and before subuh, right? And then see if you want to try. If you have done, so I'm going in order, eh? In order. If you have not done A, then do A. If you have not done B, then do B. If you have not done C, then do C. Right? C is taraweh. Right? Taraweh. Taraweh with what? If you can uh, taraweh with your family. Okay? Uh, in congregation, taraweh. Right? If you have not been doing it at all, then at least do eight. Right? Eight raka'at. If you have been doing eight raka'at, then do twenty. Right? So even if you can say, oh, I can't do it every single night. It's very, very tiring to do it every single night. Then at least on the 17th of Ramadan, this is Saturday, right, you say, okay, okay, I have energy. Okay, can. I can do it. Right? And then uh, if you want, you want to prepare. It's not speak about, about things you can prepare of what you can eat, what you should not eat, what you should, you should eat to help yourself do even more uh, on the night of Ramadan. Right? So terawih with family, 8 or 20 raka'at. Uh, and then you have also... Uh, to do Quran okay. So the Quran To do more Quran So whether or not you are um, Reading from the Quran Or you're reading from Iqra Or from wherever you're reading in, uh, uh, With respect to the Quran uh, You do more Quran on that night right? And then um, and then E, A, B, C, D, E Like dua A lot of dua Okay, people who cannot pray right? Cannot pray meaning that you have your menses right? Those who cannot pray right? What do you do? Right, so for those people who are unable to pray, right, so you don't pray any of the prayers, of course, right, so you replace your prayers with, uh, you replace your prayers with service. You can do service, right? You know why it's service, right? You serve your family, okay, and this is one of the easiest things to do, right, because you see your mother, your your your, your father, you know, your family, they want to pray, right, and you cannot pray, for example. So what do you do? Go and wash the plates. You can wash the plates. <laughs> you go and prepare the iftar. You go and uh, clean up after everybody has eaten. Uh, you can clean up the table. You go and uh, help out in uh, cleaning up the house. You arrange things. You prepare tea for them. You prepare water for them. You give them in, in, in the room. You bring it to the room, you give it to them. You prepare food for them if you want to. <laughs> so people who are praying, they can just focus on their prayer. If you cannot pray, then you go and uh, think of what can I do right, to help people out, right? and and you get the same you get the same reward as the people who are praying. You get the same reward because you're helping them out. Right? So service, right? Whether you want to, I know like for most for a lot of uh, for my mother especially, they like it whenever people help out in the kitchen. You just go there right? and you just wash the plates. You 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 keep up you keep all the food. You put it in the fridge, like, or if you want, you can buy uh, some things for your family to, to break fast on. If you cannot fast, right, so you do you do service, right? So you do uh, cleaning up. Right, so after they pray, they don't have to go out there and clean up again, you know, especially if for for people who have no helper, you have no helper in the house, or even if you have a helper in the house, if she is uh, a Muslim and she wants to pray, you can let her pray, and then you can say, "Kena mai today, I will do the I will do the <laughs> the the khidmah. I will do the service if you want to." Right, uh, whatever it takes to get you more and more reward on these days of Ramadan. Right, later on I'll speak about the importance of 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 doing this on the seventh of Ramadan because this is the this is the beginning of the of the last ten days. Right, it's, it's about it's a few days before the beginning of the last ten days. Right, last ten days begins from the twenty first of Ramadan until the end, where you see everybody really trying their best to do as much as they can to to take uh, to get as much you know pahala and reward in Ramadan. Right, so cleaning up, uh, helping out, right, preparing uh, food and drink, right, all of these things you can do. Okay, uh, if you if your family members there are those who are going out to work, like your father, if they are still going out because they have to go to work, uh, then you can iron their clothes for them. <laughs> you can you can do laundry. Right, all of these things all will help you. Uh, get more in Ramadan. Right. It's the same thing also. If you can't do the Sunnah prayers of uh, Isha uh, or Taraweh also, right? Then what you can do, right, is what do you do? Sleep, eh? No, you don't sleep. You don't waste your time. Right. What do you do? You go and uh, whatever you like. Right. But you can go and uh, if you can watch, watch what? Watch good lectures. Right, watch good lectures on Islam. Right? Or even on the life of the Prophet. Right? Or read up 
read up about the battle of Badr. Right? Find out what happened in the in this in this great battle. Why is it a great night? And inshallah today I will tell you some stories about that about this great battle. Okay, same thing with the Quran. If you can't read the Quran, right, then uh, if you can help other people read the Quran and you help them uh, hear it, hear how they read it. But if you're not able to read the Quran, then go and uh, listen to stories right, about the Quran and about the night whereby the first Quran, whereby the first revelation happened. Right, dua, anybody can do dua. The dua is, is open for all. All right. Any questions so far? I've not gone into the stories yet. Eh? Today, I just, I just only uh, speaking about what can we do on this, on this great night, on the seventeenth of Ramadan. Okay. Any? Yes. Okay. If you for a night, a night on seventeenth of Ramadan, uh, you can do the zikr that I just taught you all, the zikr of Ramadan. I should do Allah, ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah. You can do that one. You can do the one that I just taught you also about the 20, 20, the, 20, the, the second 10 set of this. Right? The one about Allahumma uh, ufil li zunubi ya rabbal alami. Right? I wrote here. Do you see? Yeah, you can do that yeah, again and again. Right? Uh, you can also do Salawat. Allahumma sari ala sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma sari ala sayyidina Muhammad. Right? Over and over again. You can do if it's if it's if it's, if it's long, you can do istighfar, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Right? You can do alhamdulillah, whatever that you want to do right? on this night of uh, of the seventeenth Ramadan, because all of your deeds will be accepted. And one of the greatest things to do is dua, to do a lot of dua on this night right? of Ramadan. So whatever that you want, uh, in especially in the hereafter, uh, whatever you want as an adult, you know, as, as you grow up as a, as uh, as a Muslim, as a Muslima. Right, that you want to be more like uh, you know any of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You want to be a better daughter. You want to be a better uh, sister. You want to be a better friend. Right? You want to be a better. Uh, that's all right. You are not not wives, right? <laughs> you are daughter, sister, friend. Right? In the future, you want to be a very good wife and mother right, to other people. Right? So you make your du'as in, in every night in Ramadan. You do as much du'a as you can. And if you know of people who are who are having a lot of problems, then you make dua for them right, in the snack of Ramadan. Right? That's, that shows your love for other people. Right? And as Muslims, we love everybody around us, right? So you make dua, you know, of your friend. You know, maybe you know of your friend who is not uh, not serious about her religion. Then you say it's very difficult to talk to them. So you make dua. You dua, 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 dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to open up their heart that maybe one day that they will they will love. To learn about the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they will love to learn about Sayyidina Khadija, Sayyidina Fatima, right? and they will love uh, everything to do with this, to do with this religion. And then they will, and then in the day of judgment, they all will be together, right, in the highest parts of paradise. You may love to ask on the night, on the seventeenth of Ramadan. I, when I tell you the stories of, of 17th of Ramadan, you understand why this night, this specific night, is so special uh, in Islam. And right? when you hear the stories of what happened on the seventeenth of Ramadan. Okay, any other question about this? You have no other question? Admit. Okay, oh, there's, there's a question here. Let me just get the question. Mm, what if during Ramadan, right, a person is rude to their parents uh, or siblings? Okay, if this happened to a person uh, in Ramadan, right, and we're all human beings, right, it's, we're human beings. So, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not expect us to be perfect. Okay, that's the person you must understand. Right? We're not perfect. But that's not an excuse. Right? They don't say, oh, so yeah, I'm not perfect. What? It's not an excuse. I, mean, I, I, can't be, I can't be like an angel. I'm not an angel. It's not an excuse. But it's an understanding right? that we will make mistakes. Okay? We will make mistakes. We will become, might be rude to those who are around us. Sometimes we become very uh, uh, harsh. And even harsh on our own parents sometimes. That you, dis, you dismiss what your mother said. You say, don't want lah, don't want lah. You, and, and then after that, you feel bad about it. That why I speak that way to my mother? Why I speak that way to my father? Right? And it will be something that, that will happen to you over and over again <laughs> as you go through life. Right? But what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us is that we 
learn how to repent. Right? And repent doesn't mean it means to taubat. To taubat. Doesn't mean that you will never do it ever again. That you will try your very best to never do it ever again. It's a very big difference there. Eh? Never being never never doing it ever again is something that you hope happens for you, right? But but if it happens again, you fall into it again, or you accidentally do it again, right? Then you talk about again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and each time you do it, you don't do it much. I'm like you're just playing around, like insincerely, because Allah knows we are sincere, right? You do it very sincerely. If you're really bad about it, it's okay. Next time, I'm just gonna try not do it again, and right? not do it again. Ask for their forgiveness. Like if you know you hurt their feelings, go to them and ask for their forgiveness. If you're too shy to do that, right? and sometimes you know because of of how things are, sometimes you're too shy to say sorry, right, to your own parents or to your own uh, siblings. And usually for your friends, it's easy to say sorry to them, right? but your, for your own family, that is the most difficult thing to say sorry to them, right? So if you and anyway, you can you can type a message if you want. You can write a note if you want. You can buy something and give them if you want, right? I mean, if you're very shy about it, you can do any of these things. I remember when I was young, like, I used to do it with our, with my, my sister and me. Like, we would always do it because like it's a very, you very, very, very shy. Whenever you know that you did something wrong, as well for myself when I was, I was, I mean, I'm, an, I'm, I'm an older sister. Right? So my younger sister, you know, sometimes I'd be very when I was a teenager last, like one, like two, like three, you know, like I would, I would snap at her a lot, <laughs> and I know I will always snap at her. And then my sister, uh, she's very sensitive. She's a very sensitive person, and she will cry. Right? And she's younger than me. I mean, we're young, young girls. Right? So I still remember that. You know, uh, I heard my uh, my mother was saying to me that you, you know, you cannot just do like that to your sister. You know, of course, she, you know, she's sensitive, and then she will be upset. But you can't just go and 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 be mean, and then forget all about it, and think that she get over it. Ah, halas, she get over it. You know, she 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 she's a cry baby anyway. You can't you can't think that about your sister. Right, she said, like, go and apologize. And I said, but it's so difficult to apologize. It's so weird. It's so weird to go and go to your sister or to your brother or to your brother also, eh? Go to your brother and to say, oh, sorry, you know, forgive me. Then if you find it very difficult, then you write something, lah. Write a letter. Right. Uh, buy a gift. Uh, give something you know that she likes that is yours. <laughs> if you're already sincere, right? you know it's your, you know she really likes it, and you know yeah, you are you did the wrong thing, right? Then you can go and give something, and then and I remember when I did that that she was very very happy, right? And we know she's one younger than me, but she, I remember that, that that time I think I was sec two or sec three, right? That uh, when we did that, like, and it changed a lot of things of how uh, uh, for myself how I treated my sister, right? That I became more mindful of how I spoke to her, right? More um, sensitive towards her feelings. Right. Uh, and then she also began to become more uh, understanding of my character because you know, when I was growing up very uh, very angsty <laughs> very angry right? very um, you know like like to snap very grouchy person <laughs> right so after a while you know when you learn more and more about religion that like you will see that okay you know you will try again and again and again and again and again and again and right? keep trying until you die you will keep trying. Uh, but don't think that you are that, that you're a failure. That the moment that you 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 hurt your mother's feelings, you the moment you make a make a mistake in how you talk to them, right? Don't think that it's a failure. It is a it is a stumble. You you stumble and you fall and you fell. So what do you do? Get up, right? Get up and try again. That's it. Try again. You're human beings, and that is why you know in the Quran, the first story that Allah speaks about in the Quran is story of Nabi Adam alayhi salam. That Allah speaks about Nabi Adam not because, you know, about to, to show that Nabi Adam uh, he went near a tree and he took the fruit from the tree of, the, of, of that. There was not, uh, that Allah says, don't go near the tree, right? So the story of Nabi Adam, let's just go, go, back a bit, go back a bit and just explain to people what is the story of Nabi Adam. So Nabi Adam's story is a, is a well known story. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created, created Nabi Adam in, 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 in heaven and then he said to Nabi Adam, everything is halal except for the tree. The tree, you cannot go near the tree. Everything else you can take. Right, but Nabi Adam, he went near the tree, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded him uh, of what he promised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he was sent down to the earth, right? The whole point of that story is not that, a hey, Nabi Adam, why can't he just stay away from a tree? It's not, that's not the point of the story. The whole point of the story is what Nabi Adam did after that. Uh, that's the point. Right? So the, the, the tree was there and he went to the tree, right? So, what do I say? 
you know, why must Allah put a tree there? Why can't he just put a tree, have no tree? <laughs> you know, so there's no test. Right, then he, won't, he won't make a mistake, what? Right. The whole point is not that you don't make a mistake. The whole point is, if you make a mistake, you know what to do. Right, so it's impossible, for example, it's impossible for human beings not to make mistakes. You must understand that it's impossible. Right, but what is the best thing that Allah wants from human beings is that you know how to make it better. And so after you make a mistake, what is what is what is uh, what is what is the best thing to do is to know how to make it better. Like what is blameworthy? I mean, what is the bad thing? You know, what is what is what, what you can be blamed about is that after making a mistake that you don't want to admit it, you forget about it, you don't want to acknowledge you made a mistake, right? And then act as if it's not a mistake. Right? Act as if like oh, I, 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 you know, it's the other person's fault. Right? It's somebody else's fault. You see the kind of things uh, when you make a mistake. Uh, that one is shaitanic, the shaitan method. Right? Shaitan, whenever he makes it, when, when he didn't want to bother Nabi Adam, what did he say? He blamed Allah. And he blamed Nabi Adam. Then he blamed everybody. Right? Uh, so the whole point is that you, it's not that you will not make mistakes. You, you will make mistakes. You, up, up to today, that I make mistakes, uh, all the people older than me make mistakes. Even your parents will say that they make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Right, but the best of those who make mistakes, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, the best of those who make mistakes are those who they rectify and they repent from their mistakes. Right? So in, in the hadith, all of human beings are mistake, mistake makers. <laughs> all of us. Right? But the best of them are those who know how to say sorry and they think of how they're going to do it, they're going to make up for it. Right? So that's why Rasul says in the hadith that if any of you do something bad, then follow up with something that is good. We try to make up for it. And that is the way of uh, those who are righteous. Okay. I hope that is clear in the, sto- in, the, in the answer. So it says, the reward of praying Isha and Subo, is it only in Ramadan? No, the reward of praying Isha and Subo in congregation is throughout the year. Right? So if you pray a Jama'ah Isha, right, you get half the night. If you pray Jama'ah Subo, you get the full night. Of, of reward through the year, the whole year, the same reward. Ramadan is multiplied 70 times to 70,000 times to even as much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. So, so if you can think about it, right, if you pray Isha Jama'ah in Ramadan times 70 times, there is at least 70 nights of full prayer in the night. Just like praying for rakats and praying it together with your family. And if Allah wants to, Allah can, can multiply it to 70,000 times. And who doesn't want that? <laughs> right? I mean, we pray one time and you get 70,000 nights of reward. That is, that's, that's, that's amazing, subhanAllah. And you never know on a day of judgment that the nights in Ramadan that you spend to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you pray with your family or you, you spend trying to make everybody happy, trying to you know, maintain a positive environment in the house, Trying not to pick fight with anybody, and it's something that actually, you know, myself and my husband, I will try and make it a point every every Ramadan, right, to not have any form of uh, negativity. Keep it as positive as possible, right? So even if you're upset about something, okay, you control and you make it you make it positive, right? Just let it go, let it go. It's Ramadan, it's Ramadan, it's Ramadan. Right? We are fasting. Don't waste the time in Ramadan by being upset with each other. Right, don't waste time. It's, it's a lot of time, a lot of things to do in Ramadan. Right, so, so in a sense, to make it, to, to try and try your best to be as positive as you can right, in Ramadan. And inshallah, they will help you and those around you to do more good deeds. You know, sometimes people, when they get upset with other people, after a while they might say, they might think to themselves, do you want to pray with them? Ah? And then they will say, I want to pray myself. Do you want to pray with anybody else? Right, or they will say, you know, that uh, I don't want to help them with the Quran now. They, 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 they're so mean to me. Right, so sometimes you know things that happen is negative. It makes us do not want to do what is good for ourselves and for other people. We don't understand that, but right. actually, I haven't go through the stories yet. I'm gonna go through the stories. So the first story of the Surah Quran, and those of you who have heard the story before, Alhamdulillah. Whenever Allah Subhanahu wa Taala lets us hear the same story over and over and over and over again, right, it is a sign that He wants to give us more lessons and more gifts from that story. Right, so the Surah Quran might be a story that you've heard so many times. Or you never heard it before. Or let it be that every single time you hear it, it's as if it's the first time you hear it. Right? So you can learn, you, can, you can, can be in so much admiration and so much love for the Prophet. So the first story is Nuzul 
al Quran. Okay, this is the seerah of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It happens so when? When did it happen? Like on the 17th of Ramadan, right? Uh, in the 40th year of the Prophet's life, and right? he was 40 years old. 40th year of the Prophet. Where? Where did it happen? Right? In the cave of Hira on Jabal Nur. And Jabal Nur is mountain of light. Okay. Right. Uh, happened at night. Eh? I'm going to put night of the 17th Ramadan. Right. What was he doing? Right. What was the Prophet doing? And what was he doing? That he was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you ask me, how come he knows about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Of course he knows about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All prophets know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is from Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. Right, so there were people in his time who were worshippers of Allah alone. They never worshipped the idols. And we believe that all prophets never worshipped anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone right, in this cave. Uh, and if any of you have been to this cave, it's an amazing place to go. Right, if, you can, if you can go and climb the mountain, see how difficult to get all the way up there. We spoke about Zainal Khadija and how she climbed the mountain, right? And in her old age, and she would spend days, or, or he, the Prophet would spend days in this, in this cave, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and asking him for guidance. The guidance here, don't we don't think don't think that the guidance is for the Prophet Sallallahu He is guided. The Prophet Sallallahu is always guided because he is a Prophet Sallallahu But asking for guidance for his people, for human beings, uh, and there is someone who is sincere uh, towards other people. Right? So how many of us that you, if you if you want to make du'a, your first du'a that you make is about yourself. You think to yourself, what do I want? What do I want? What do I want? It's, it's good, it's okay to do du'a like that But do you think of, you know, what about that person? What about my, my friend? What about my cousin? What about my, my, my sister? What about the, the poor? What about this people? That people? You know, to, to make du'a for everybody else right? And when you make du'a for everybody else Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you like, Whatever you du'a for other people And here also you see him when he went up to the cave And he will sit there for days you know, sometimes for a full week he will sit there for three days in a row. Sometimes the entire month he will sit there and he will just dua and dua and dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His wife, Sayyidina Khadija, will bring food to him right, at, the, at the mountain. And he will actually sometimes he will go down halfway the mountain to meet his wife and take food and go back up right, in the mountain. And Sayyidina Khadija, she knew what he was doing because she knew that he was going to be a prophet. So she knew that it's a matter of time that the angel will come. Right, so now what happened? Right, so where, where he was, now what? Happen. And what happened in this night? Right. In this night, Jibril appeared. The angel Jibril. And the angel Jibril appeared in front of Prophet Alaihi Wasallam. Right, and he said the very famous words, Iqra. Right. Iqra meaning read. Right. He said to Rasam, read. And you see, you can imagine it. Eh? Rasulullah is alone in a, in a cave. It's at night. It's on top of a mountain. There's nobody there. Right? And the angel Jibril appears right, out of nowhere. And he says to him, read. Right? How many of us would be very scared at this point? <laughs> if you're alone in the cave at night, and then and, uh, you know, a, a human being, you, you think it's a human being, but it's not a human being, it's an angel, right? appears to you and says, read. Right? Rasulullah SAW, his response was, he said, I don't know how to read. That's his first answer. I don't know how to read. I am not someone who reads. And in fact, in the time, in that time, majority of the of people at that time they don't read. They don't read. They don't write. Right. Uh, so Jibril, what did he do? Jibril said, "Angel Jibril, Allah is Let me just bring this down. Jibril, Jibril uh, hugged the Prophet." Hugged him, right? Meaning that he so literally he took the Rasulullah and he squeezed him so tight, 
that Razazam said that he, he felt like his ribs were going to break because Jibril hugged him very tightly and let him go. So he hugged the Prophet tightly and let him go and repeated. What did he repeat? Read again. Right. But there is no book in front of him to read. Eh? Don't think that there's a book that he gave him and say, read this book, read this book. No. He just said, Iqra, Iqra, read, read. And the Razam said again, I don't know how to read. And he didn't even say, what do I read? He said, I don't know how to read. And, uh, uh, I am not someone who is a reader. Right, so he says again, and he repeats. So he repeats, and uh, he says, again, I don't know. This story tells us from the very beginning the sincerity of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. From the very beginning, right? That that when he when when we look at the story, you see that 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 how can you know someone who does not know how to read can come and tell us so many surahs from the Quran, full the full Quran, right? And this will tell us that you know that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is really a prophet. And that's why we always begin by speaking about our belief in Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, loving the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then later on we talk about the laws of Islam. Right? We, we 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 love and we believe in him, right? And then we, we obey him, and it will make it very easy for us to want to pray, to want to sedekah, to want to, to give charity, to want to uh, uh to do to 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 be kind towards other people. To want to have good akhlaq, right, good character, all of it comes from our love for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right, so this happened to him, and again Jibril hugged him, and Ija Jibril right, hugged him, right, again tightly, right, and said, "Read, read, read again, right, read in the name of Allah." Uh, who created and now the verse comes down Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq and then and Jibril gave the first five verses of uh, Surah Alaq right? so the first five verses right? or ayat of Surah Alaq right? which means I'm going to read the meaning of in, in English right? which means read in the name of your Lord right? Lord meaning your creator Right, Lord meaning creator. Right, who created. Right, so first read. So read here means what? Seek knowledge. Right, seek knowledge and seek real knowledge. Beneficial knowledge. Right, don't, don't, don't go and learn things that, that, that doesn't benefit you and other people. Benefits you, benefits other people, benefits everyone's akhirat. Right, seek real knowledge, and in the name of your Lord, that means because of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. That you read certain books. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You go for class. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Right, you have the intention. You want to be a better Muslim, better person. Right, so you read the name of Allah who created. Iqra bismi Rabbika ladi khalaq khalaq al insana min alaq. Right, He created the human being. From a clot, right? Alaq. Right. Here, the second part, what we learn from this is be humble. Be humble. Right? Because where do we start from? We start from, from a tiny liquid inside our mother's womb. That was all we were, right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us bigger and bigger and bigger, right? and then we came out of our mothers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us grow into in the full in the full human beings. And what does the human being do? The human being doesn't want to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The human being doesn't want to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The human being wants to find fault with every single thing. The human being doesn't know doesn't want to be humble. And being humble is a very, very, very important trait for a human being to have. I'm going to do the first five uh, only, eh? Because it's the first five that came down on that on that night, on that blessed night. Uh Iqra. Right, read and your Lord or your, your God is the most generous. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give, right? So the most generous meaning that we rely 
on Allah right? We ask Allah so don't think that you know that 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 you are the one that that uh, you have the energy and you you are the one who has the power right to to do all these good things that you do around you. Right? But Allah is the one who lets you do it, and He is the one who helps you to do it. Right? So even when you want to pray, there's some people they will say, you know, it's so hard to pray. I cannot pray. And right? the answer is ask Allah, ask Allah to help you to pray. And be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni by the embroidery down here. Whereby you say after every prayer, Oh Allah, help me in remembering you. Remembering you. And uh, being grateful to you. And Perfecting my worship of you. Right? After, after every prayer, I have to recite this dua. I put it in Arabic. Allahumma a'inni ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Okay? So, so if anybody is finding it difficult with their prayers or finding it difficult with their fasting or finding anything in Islam to be difficult, then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it says here, read and Allah is generous. Allah wants to give, but you have to ask. Ask Him. Right? Don't rely on yourself. Learn Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, like he thought with the pen. Right. So this is Surah Iqra. There are five verses. Let me just number them, okay? So the first, the first verse is, eh, where am I? Okay. The first verse is read. Right. In the name of your Lord. Number two is, He created a human being from a cloth. Then again, repeat read. Right. Two times Allah says read. It means increase in knowledge. Read some more. Read some more. Read some more. Get to know Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala well. And a lot of problems in, in our time is because people don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala well. They don't know how to call unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is number four. Right? He taught uh, Iqra wa Rabbukal Akram. And he taught with the pen. Right? And then the last one is uh, he taught the human being what he does not know. And what the human being does not know. So he thought with the pen, right, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us with the pen shows that like, all, all the inventions and gifts from Allah, okay, all inventions are gifts from Allah right, for the human being to learn to be better human beings. I think better human beings and better servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so Allah talked with the pen. The pen it's not just the pen, right? Uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He, uh, right now in our time, the internet, right, in our time, videos, our time, we have audio, all kinds of things that you can learn from, you can, you can gain in your knowledge from. Right, so all of these things, these are gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use them to become better human beings. And better uh, uh, Muslims uh, in the way of our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the pen is basically it just it's a it's a, it's a, it's a symbol, the pen. Right? But you use everything that you have. So your phone, you have a phone right now, right? Use your phone. Right? Use it for, for for something that Allah subhanahu would love. Don't use it for things that Allah would hate. And right? then then you're not using it properly, right? And he taught a human being what he does not know. Right? So everything to have gratitude. Right, to have shukur right, All that you know All that you do All that you have You, you, have, you have achieved in your life All of it who, who is the one who helped you? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said the first verses That came to our Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam In the cave And, and then Jibril He left And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He ran down from the cave He ran down from the mountain He ran to his uh, house uh, To his wife Sayyidina Khadija And he was in shock Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in shock And he was shaken And he said to his wife To, to his wife Sayyidina Khadija uh, Take 
take, you know, cover me, cover me, wrap me, wrap me. And because he was, he was, when somebody is in shock, right, the first thing you do is that you go to them and you hug them. Right? You take a blanket and you cover them right? so that they, 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 can, they know how to handle the shock. Right? And he said to her, cover me. And then he told her what happened and she said that she believed in him. So the first person who believes in the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is Satuna Khadija. She didn't even say anything at all, saying that, "Oh, are you sure? Do you think it was a dream? Right? Are you imagining things? She didn't say anything of that. She said that, "No, no, no. It is true. Right? It is true. You're a good person, Oh Muhammad. You're a good man. You're a good person. Right? Allah subhanahu wa taala will not allow for bad things to happen to you." And then she said that, "Let's come." And we go and meet our, go and meet my cousin Waraka bin Naufal. He will tell you more about this, and he will tell you about the, you know, about 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 prophethood, and the and the prophets of the past. So the first things that happened in, uh, in the in the night of Nuzul al Quran, right? We're going to take questions. We're really actually out of time. So fast today. <laughs> it's almost six already. Um, let's see. Any questions or not? You see how wonderful it is to learn Sira, to learn the life of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that you learn to see that he also had, you know, he also had fear. He's a human being, right? He also had, um, uh, went through uh, shock, right? And then he also had sincerity uh, with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Tell us a story. I just told you a story. <laughs> what story do you want? Sorry, just a story. Okay, Battle of Badr. Battle of Badr, the story of Battle of Badr, it happened on the, 17th, on the night of the 17th Ramadan also. Right? It's a night whereby Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, um, okay, good question, I'll answer the next question. It's a night whereby Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he spent the whole night doing dua to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for the Muslims to win over the Kafir. And the Kafir, there were 1,000 people, and the Muslims were 313. There's one third. You see the numbers there, 1,000 to 313, it's one third. Right? But he dua and dua and dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And eventually Allah sent down uh, the army of angels to help the Muslims. Which is, why, which is why many of the scholars will say the 17th of Ramadan, if you really want to dua for anything, even things that you feel will never happen for you, right? but you want to dua for it, dua. Right? dua. And if it's good for you, it will happen for you. If it's not good for you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you something that is better. Right, so dua for your iman, dua for the people around you, dua for your akhirat, dua for your prayers, dua for your, uh, for your, for your fasting, dua for your parents. Right, they are the most deserving of your duas. Uh, dua for your studies. Right, that you want to be uh, uh, upright and, 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 and uh, upright, upright students with good character. If you have problems with your temper, dua that Allah removes the temper from you. Uh, Allah gives you the good character of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be more like him. And someone asked dua uh, that is good to read before studying. Uh, I'll give you a dua to read before studying if you want. Uh, there are many duas that you can read. Right. Uh, so any subject, is it? Is it the answer? Is it the question? Any subject? Dua to read before studying. Right. So uh, if you want to read uh, any form of dua, it's a lot actually. How long do you want? <laughs> there's long duas, there's short duas. Right. So maybe I'll give you a... Uh, uh, okay, a very simple one. So first thing you do is that you hear Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. That's a dua. Right, so you say Alhamdulillah. Right here, Rabbil. Okay, that's the first thing you do. Then you say Salawat. Right, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Sayyidina Muhammad right. Wa ala I'm going to go to the next page Wa ala uh, Ahalihi Wa sahbihi Wa salim Right Okay And then So whenever you want to dua for anything You begin with, with Alhamdulillah And you just lawat Then you dua Okay So if you want to dua Right, uh, this is one dua that uh, if you know who is Habib Kadim, right? Habib Kadim, his mother taught me this dua specifically for Quran studying, but you can use it for any form of lessons. Right, I'm going to give you in Arabic, then I'm going to give you in uh, in English. Right, so if you want to say in English, if it's easier for you, then you say it in English. If you want to say it in Arabic, and then that, that is also uh, 
permissible to do. Okay, so you say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Fattah, Ya Alim, Ya Fattah, Ya Alim. Uh, you do it three times. Ya Fattah, Ya Alim, Ya Fattah, Ya Alim, three times. B, Jahin, Na, Bi Jahin, Na, Bi Yil Karim. Right, Bijahin Nabi Yil Karim. Okay, I need to go to the next page. Okay, can I go to the next page? Otherwise, otherwise, it will it will be hidden. Okay, Bijahin Nabi Yil Karim, wa bihaqil Quran, Quranil Quran Yil Azim, iftah. قلبي لي حف ذل قرآن نل كريم ولي جميع عد جميع دروسي جميع جميع دروسي أجمعين Right? And then you slow it. Okay. I'm just going to take this and bring it to the next to the next page, okay? So that I don't have to go back and forth. Alright. Okay, so I'm on the next page. Okay, look at this. Can you see it? Can you see it, right? And then and then you and then you slow it. Well. Okay, okay. Masallallah. <laughs> Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Tamam. So selawatlah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Okay. So here uh, the, 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 the meaning of this dua is so after you say alhamdulillah rabbil alamin this lawas you say ya allah like the opener like the knower like allah is the one who opens up your minds and opens up your hearts like the opener the knower the opener the knower the opener the knower like three things three times you say this right uh, by the uh, by the honor of or by the sorry by the by the by the station of region by the honor lah eh. by the honor of your noble prophet and by the truth of the great Quran mm -hmm. open up my heart to uh, memorizing the noble Quran, the noble Quran, and to all of my lessons and classes all together. Okay, so it is, and then you slow it after that. And so it's recommended that before you want to study, right, that you read at least Fatiha, at least Fatiha before you study. Uh, so that your heart and your mind opens up. The Quran is very, very effective in opening up the mind and the heart. So you can memorize things uh, e uh, easier, right? So, uh, but if you're on your menses, then you can do slawat. You slawat and you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin, right? And you begin and then you make the dua and then uh, Insha Allah, things will be very easy for you to memorize and to understand. Insha Allah, Allah is the one who teaches you. Okay, we're gonna stop here for today. Jazakumullah khair for listening in uh, inshallah next week we will continue also with our class wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin al-fatiha anna allaha yarzukna al manafi'an wa amana al-khwasan wa ufula wa sata amin wa dalala ala al-huda wa yusaru bi qawmi nabi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa ila arwahi mu'alimina wa shaykhina wa zawil huqti alayna wa ila haqbatin nabi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-fatiha